hello guys and welcome so much to my channel again on this channel we do programming tutorials and mostly we do laravel tutorials but i'm thinking of uh, diversifying to other uh, other tutorials like based on node.js uh, react uh, Vue, and other uh, other technologies that i work with so this video is a continuation is like a continuation of this video here where I talked about how to integrate M-Pesa into a PHP Laravel application using M-Pesa PHP SDK. Now, if we go to this video, you'll find that many people um, asked a lot of, uh, not a lot, not a lot of questions, but many people asking for clarifications, and others are asking me to do a tutorial on how to, to, to save that data to the database now after, um, uh, after uh, extracting the data from the object that you get from M-Pesa response. So um, I, I thought of doing a tutorial, just a full tutorial on how to integrate M-Pesa in a kind of e-commerce application, just a prototype of e-commerce application. And that is what I did, uh, though I did not, I did not re record the, the tutorial, but I just have this app and then I also have the code that I'm going to leave on um, my GitHub repository in the comment section so that you can access that code in case you are interested in it or you just want to look at it. And I'm also going to explain the code. I'm going to explain the applica application structure and the code so that you can understand the process that I used to, to do the, the, the application, okay, and the functionalities. Okay, so here, let me just talk about the core functionalities of this kind of uh, a bookstore or uh, just kind of e-commerce. It can be books, can be products, whatever you want to display to the users. But our main concern is the payment functionality. So you can see this store here, it has books. So where people can buy books. So the functionality is we are displaying books which you can take as products. So it can be books, can be many other products that you are selling on your e-commerce application. And you want people to check out using M-Pesa. So somebody should be having the, uh, should be able to add those products to cart so that they can check out from the cart. So there are two implementations that you can use. You have the implementation where you can just display the products and somebody can add to the cart as many products as they, wa they want. And then during the checkout, that is when you initialize the SDK push. But then uh, somebody also wanted the functionality where somebody can just pay for certain, just particular book. So for example, they want to buy just this book. So if this is the case, what you're going to do is you're going to initialize the SDK push at this point when somebody clicks on this button here. Mm, okay, but that, that, that is about the implementation. Okay, so there are many implementations depending on the logic that you want to follow. Okay, so another thing, uh, so if you, somebody clicks on this, like this book here, um, this is how the product actually opens. You have the product description, their title, and then the, 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 the amount, and then you have the related products. That is the basic implementation of uh, Nico Master. And then when you click on Add to Cart, you can see you have to log in first right so there are functionalities that or there, there are routes that the user cannot access unless they are authenticated so let me just log log in so they have to log in first and i'll explain why they have to log in first so i've logged in and now uh, i can now add that product to cart and you can see it has taken me to my cart here and you have that product there and you can add as many products as you want, right? So we are using the case where, where the user is adding the products to cart. Okay, so they can add as many products as they want to cart. Okay, now you have two products. You can go back and add another product so that you have uh, three products, right? And you can now see the total books and then you have the total amount. So I just did uh, I just used one shilling for the products, um, and the reason is for mm, just this is just for testing because I'm going to test the SDK push, right? So, this is the adding, and you can also 
to get products so if you just click on this and you you can go to the post book and now here you can see enter book title like a test book and then price you can give it one or whatever the amount you want and then the this is the description okay and then if you click on add you see it has been added so if you go to back to the bookstore you find that you have this test book added here right but that is of course the functionality that has to be on the admin side yeah so we also have the cart functionality but remember that my concern here is not the cart is not the user interface actually i'm not very good at user interface as you can see my concern is the mpesa implementation part i'm going to explain that so after somebody has done this um, if they go to cart and now the moment they click on checkout with mpesa that is when the sdk push is initialized right and what happens so if we click on this checkout button it is going to, to send SDK push to, to, to my phone. Okay, where I'll be, where I'll be supposed, to, uh, where I'll be prompted to enter the pin, uh, my MPESA pin. And then it is going to deduct the, the, the amount here in the transaction. And then that amount is going to be, <coughs> going to be de deposited to the, to the, business account okay the, the pay bill account okay and that transaction is going to be completed all right so let's just do it i have grok and maybe those who may not be familiar with grok basically you know that if we are on the local loss this application is, is running on the local machine as you can see here and and you, there's no way that the local machine can communicate with the internet unless we use a link all right that is online so that is where ungrok comes in so ungrok is going to receive request if we initialize ungrok we'll just do ungrok and then http http um, 127.0.0.1 that is the local host and then the port is 8000 so you are running grok on port 8000 and it will give us this url so this url is going to to listen it's going to listen to any request that comes to it and it is going to forward it to our application and it is going to forward to the local law so that we can get that response so when we pay with mpesa and you have set this as our callback url what is going to happen is that after the transaction has gone through successfully mpesa is going to send back a response and that response will be sent to this url that is online and it is going to forward to the local host uh, which is this uh, local host port 8000 and we'll get that and serve to the database so since grok is running we just have to copy this url and then we open our application and change the um, this is the application i just open using the vs code and then you just want to change the callback url to the current url of the of the grok right so on the mpesa controller here i have this callback url because this is where the uh, the, the 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 response is going to be sent so i have to change this callback url to the one that you've just received from grok right and then i've saved that so that's it so we are going to test i'm going to click on check i'm going to click on check out the mpesa so what is going to happen let, let me show you the transactions so it's, it's, you can see you have three transactions and one transaction is pending and it is mine All right we'll see what will happen and then you have these payments here so these payments are actually real payments they are not hard coded every time we, we pay we are going to get this information here this information should be on the back end or admin side of the application, but I just did it so that uh, I, I had no time to create the admin dashboard. So that's why I just did it here for displaying, for, for explanation, just to explain to you how it works. And then now you have the transaction. So this transaction is pending, and that is why you can see it has not been completed. That's why you can see that uh, here we have only two payments, but we have three transactions here. Now, 
I think Mpesa has an issue so that in a way that after one request has been sent, it has to delay for some time again before before allowing another transaction to take place. So I tested that yesterday. It will go on, it, it will go through once and I'll get the response. It will be saved to the database. But then when I try the second time, it will not come to the it will not send back the response. Alright, so so I think they have timed their server so that when you send a test request now, um, it has to wait for some time before before re replying to another request. Okay, so if I try to check out, you will see that it is not going to allow me and I'll explain the reason why. So I'll go back to the cart and try to check out the Mpesa and you see you still have a pending transaction. So I set it in a way that if the user has a pending transaction, uh, they'll not be allowed to do another transaction. And that is, the reason for that is to avoid the double payment. So let's say that they have paid and the, the other request is pending. Mm, the Safari, Safari com or Mpesa has not sent back the response. We don't want to allow them to do another transaction because it can uh, lead to double charging, which we don't want. So there's a way you can implement that maybe after if that pen if it pens for uh, let's say you can set it that if it if it pens for thirty minutes you can uh, you can delete that transaction so that the user is able, can be able to make another transaction but for the time being we'll just go to the table and delete that transaction manually so that we can uh, do another one so. I'm on the transactions table and I'm going to delete this last transaction here. All right. So let me just refresh. And now you have two transactions completed and also two payments that are completed. All right. So this ID is the ID that comes from the Mpesa. That that the one that you receive PG, whatever has been confirmed. So that is this ID you see here. So that is the Mpesa transaction ID or payment receipt ID. So let's just go to cart and now I'll try to check out. Now I have my my phone here. So I'm just I just want to to initialize this and I want you to watch this. You can see Grok here there's no request that has been received. But if we send the request here and I get the message and I enter the pin and the transaction goes through successfully you are going to see uh, a request sent here and it is if it is it will have gone through successfully you are going to get a uh, 200 code okay so let's just do it so I just click on check out with them and look at what happens it initializes a new transaction and sets the status to pending first all right and I've done that let me wait for for the message and I've received the message and uh, Pesa confirmed and the three shillings have been sent to it has been sent to to whatever that is just test account so <clears throat> what happens we'll check in rock and see if the request comes here if it doesn't come it means that there is an issue and the the, the response has not been forwarded to us and that issue actually is not on the it's not on our side it's not it's not on the side of application actually the the test, the sandbox credential have a lot of issues, and many people are, exp are experiencing th those issues. So we find that the response sometimes they come, sometimes they don't come, and then we have those delays. So it looks that the response did not come, and that is why the transaction remains pending. All right, it remains pending, but then that is not the problem of the application. The application has been has been implemented well. Sometimes those requests go through, sometimes they don't go through. But then on the live application, everything works very well. So what, what I want to do here, um, there is a way I can just complete this transaction. Okay, there's a way I can just complete this transaction here. And what I, I have to do is uh, I'll just go to, I'll, op, I'll complete it with Postman. So if I just go to Postman, and manually send that uh, you just manually send response to that uh, to, to that this specific callback URL and it is going to complete that uh, transaction so I just go to 
uh, I have some respond body here. I mean, I have that respond that the way it comes. This is the respond that you'll normally receive from you'll normally receive from Mpesa. Okay, now you can see. So this this is basically how the respond comes. So from Safaricom, Safaricom will send this this response via yeah, this data here after you have paid, All right? And after it sends this. What you do is just receive the this you receive this response and then you extract these parameters and then you save to the database. So when we send this request, what happens is that uh, this this request it goes to it will come to this URL which is the in, the, the, the Grok here Grok instant learning here and then it's going to be forwarded to it's going to be forwarded to this. Uh, to this route and this route is going to handle that so the, the controller handling this the mpesa controller and basically it receives the data extracts the important information that you want from that response object and then saves the database and after that it updates the transaction status and also adds a new payment so don't worry with this error 500 i was trying Mm, but I was trying the wrong number, and that is why the number that does not exist in the database, and that is why we got that, um, we got that error there. So let's just do this. We just send. Um, let me. Let's just send it, and just watch this. Watch this. We are going to receive a res request, a response inside this, and then it is going to handle it. So let me just send and watch here, and you can see you have okay. So okay means that it went through successfully. Now meaning that this transaction has been completed now. If we go to payments now, we shall get the third payment. You can see the amount is three shillings. The user is the pay the impressor, the receipt ID, and then the phone number, and then the, the date that transaction was uh, made. And then and now if we go to transactions that pending transaction has been completed and that happens you have already automated it you are not the one who manually completes it 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 is automated like that okay so this part i don't want this video to be long this part is just for explaining uh, basically the interface how it works and then in the next video i'm going to just in the next video i'm going to now explain the code so if, if you've watched this, maybe you've not gotten some idea on how to implement um, person integration on an e-commerce application. Mm. But now I'm going to explain the code. I'm going to explain the database structure. I'm going to explain the 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 basic uh, the basic uh, tables that you need for implementing this, and the relationship between those models and also the code. And the M-Pesa um, M pesa controller. So you just check this. Uh, you're just going to check this M-Pesa SDK because this is the one that you are using. We are not using. We are using this package M-Pesa PHP SDK. So you can just go through it. It is quite easier for you to read through and to also to understand. So I'm going to explain the code there in the next uh, session. But actually, I explained. There's a video that I explained that, and the, and I've just this is the video I explained about how you can integrate using the uh, uh, using PHP SDK. So you want to go through this video if you want to understand Mpesa SDK. Um, and then also I leave this I leave this code in the tutorial. So thank you so much, and let's uh, meet in the next tutorial.